live from Cleveland's News Center. Cleveland 19 News starts now. Oh my God! All of a sudden this plane just dropped out of the sky. It just like veered sideways and just plowed right into the uh, duplexes there. At least two people are dead after a plane crashed into a neighborhood in Akron. We're told nine people were on board when the business jet went down this afternoon on Mogador Road. Sarah Goldenberg is tracking the breaking details and she begins our team coverage live in Akron with the latest. Sarah. Well, when it comes to identifying all of the victims, the medical examiner's office tells me they are at a standstill. They are waiting for tomorrow morning when they can thoroughly investigate the scene and activate their mass fatality plan. As you can see, investigators are still out here. They will be out here late through the night into tomorrow morning trying to figure out exactly how this plane crashed. Now, this is video of the building catching fire after the plane crashed into it just before 3 o'clock. The FAA says a Hawker H-20 25 twin engine business jet left Dayton and was on the way to Akron Fulton International Airport. Officials say the plane clipped a telephone wire and hit an apartment building at Mogador Road and Forest Park and then crashed to the ground. Ohio Highway Patrol tells us the plane can hold up to 10 people, but they won't say just how many were on board at the time of the crash. We want to find out that information. We know there's family out there that want to know you know, is, is their loved one involved in this crash? And we, you know, we, for that reason alone, we want to get that information and we will get that inf information. But again, it's going to be a process and it could be a process that, that process that goes all night long. It could be a process that uh, continues into, into tomorrow uh, during daylight hours. Officials say the plane cabin is intact but badly burned, and right now the FAA and NTSB are investigating. They tell me that no one on the ground was hurt. Live in Akron, Sarah Goldenberg, Cleveland 19. And that plane was just a few miles from the airport when it crashed in that residential area. Dan DeRose is here with a look at what route the jet took before it went down. Yeah, Ramona, that's what makes this uh, even uh, that much more traffic is uh, tragic as they were just a couple of miles from the airport. We know this is the type of plane that crashed, so you can see it's a sizable private plane. Uh, using Flight Tracker, we can see it took off just at about 2.13 this afternoon from the Dayton Wright Brothers uh, Airport. It makes the path across Columbus and it gets up into the Akron area and as we zoom in here this is uh, where it gets sad because you can see it gets just two miles from the airport the green line stops that's where it crashed uh, we know the flight was 36 minutes in duration and then again pretty sad when you see status results unknown because the plane does come down I want to do uh, one more quick demonstration when we look at Google Earth uh, and just exactly where this is very important to, to remind you this is Akron Fulton Airport this is not the Akron Canton Airport. We're on the southeast side of Canton at this point. The crash happened right here. That's the area we just saw Sarah live at. The plane had uh, made a big loop outside of La uh, Mogador as it was coming in to make its landing. Uh, this area between the airport, between the runway and the crash site is just about two miles. So they just about made it. The question will be what was it about the landing procedure? What was it about its approach? Uh, that brought the plane down. We'll have to wait for the officials to get that answer. Denise? All right, Dan, thank you so much. We're also learning more about the plane involved in this crash. It was based in Fort Lauderdale. It was made by Hawker, and it's a business jet similar to this one here. Chief Investigator Carl Monday found ExecuFlight is the company that leased the plane. Carl spoke with the CEO by phone tonight, and he told Carl that he did not personally know the identities of the two pilots or the passengers. And tonight we're hearing the 911 calls for help right after that plane went down. It helps to illustrate the panic people in that area were feeling. Take a listen. I can see it burning right now. I thought I heard a plane go down and I can see an explosion. I can see fire. I'm positive you guys already called for the airplane just crashed into these houses right in front of me. As you just heard, uh, witnesses could not believe what they were seeing, a plane coming out of the sky and crashing. Two men were inside a convenience store down the street when the plane crashed. 
talking and out of nowhere you just hear a boom outside. I thought it was a car crash and everything like that, but we go outside, someone's saying scre screaming 911 to call it, you know, call paramedics and everything, see it's a plane out there. People out of their houses and tell them to get out, get out, right. you know, the apartment right beside them. And we said, get out of there because the house is on fire, the plane just crashed. Yeah, frightening for everyone involved. Now, there are other firsthand accounts of the tragic moments the plane went down. You can only imagine the fear people were feeling when they saw that plane coming in. Scott Taylor is live with that part of the story. Scott? I want to show you what's going on here right now. You can see Mogador is still being blocked off the entire street here on Mogador Road. If you're familiar with this part of the city by the Akron Police Department, we still have the crime scene tape up right here, as you can see. And if we go down farther, the house that the plane hit is on the right side. There's a fire truck. Um, in front of that, you can see the um, police lights as well. And I've also just learned the Highway Patrol has confirmed the plane was flying from Dayton to Akron. It was probably the second leg of a trip from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We do believe that a company out of North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, actually um, owns the plane. Now, it was around 2.30 this afternoon with a clear sky. So a lot of people heard and saw the pilot struggling to keep the plane in the air. We obtained several videos and pictures moments after the crash. Roberta Porter and Mike Patton were in two different spots as the plane came down, both with very unique views. Roberta in her car down the street from the house that was hit, and Mike blocks away with a view of the plane as the pilot tried to stay in the air. All of a sudden, this plane just dropped out of the sky. It just like veered sideways and just plowed right into the uh, duplexes there. And it was just an instant boom and flames and smoke, and it was horrific. It was terrible. Did it look like he was trying to pull up at all? Yeah, or? yeah, he was definitely, it, it did appear that when he knew he was around the trees, I don't know, I'm not a pilot, but just from what I saw, it looked like he really wanted to try to pull out and at that time he was just too low and it just went went down now this is where i understand we are with the information coming from authorities tomorrow at noon right here at the crash site on magador road you're going to see the akron police department here the sheriff's department and the medical examiner as well and that's where we hope to learn a lot more on exactly what happened and how many people were on that plane reports are as many as nine right now though we only have two confirmed deaths people who are on that plane again nobody as sarah told you earlier nobody on the ground hurt live in akron scott taylor cleveland 19. all right scott thank you in the weather center with jeff there was some rain mm -hmm. also a limited visibility in the area at the time of that crash so what kind of conditions were the pilots dealing with well the the, the rain diminished to a drizzle okay and uh, the visibility yeah it was poor but i think the main thing is going to be that low cloud deck mm -hmm. uh, that was the biggest weather problem out there for pilots now we're not saying that weather was the main factor here but let me show you on the radar what this looked like uh, at one o'clock in the afternoon. There you see the rain uh, pulling out to the east and then we just had some drizzle. It was a mile and a half visibility, which that's not dense fog, but the cloud ceiling was 600 feet. Now this type of weather is what we call IFR uh, conditions for pilots. That's instrument flight rule, which means pilots need instruments at approach uh, for them to be able to land the plane. They can't visualize or they can't see the runway on approach. So that was the weather condition at the Akron Fulton Airport just before 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Denise? Right, Jeff, thank you. Well, now we're going inside the investigation as officials try to figure out what may have happened to cause that crash. David Whitman is here with some insight. Think about this, Denise. The plane went down two miles from the airport and the visibility was a mile and a half. Remember those numbers here. Investigators are waiting until morning light to search the crash scene to look for clues. Earlier tonight, I had a chance to speak with aviation attorney Jamie Leibowitz. He told me that in today's weather at that airport, the pilot should have had an eye on the runway before getting too low. Unless you have the airport environment in sight, at, at or about 500 feet, you should not be descending into this type of runway environment. So that could be a factor to look at. Was the, was the system, the navigation systems on board the aircraft functioning properly? Could there have been a system failure? 
Now, the Hawker does have a cockpit voice recorder. That could tell investigators what the pilots were saying, if anything, in those last critical moments. And it could pick up the audible alarm from something called the ground proximity warning system. That's designed to alert the crew that the plane was too low, too soon. But Denise, it'll be a year or so before we know exactly what happened here. Right. All right. Thanks, David. And we'll have more on the crash coming up. Remember, you can get notified anytime news breaks by signing up for our breaking news alerts on our app or have it emailed right to you through our website, cleveland19.com. You may have received one of the new chip credit cards, but there is some confusion over how they work. Coming up, what you need to know. And it's sure to be a popular gift this holiday season. But what one television company is doing with your personal information makes them seem more like a Grinch. Breaking news and weather 24-7. Download the Cleveland 19 News app. Sponsored by Kissling, Nestico, and Red. Hurt in a car? Call KNR. Live from Cleveland's News Center. Driven by Don Joseph Toyota in Kent. This is Cleveland 19 News. We continue to follow breaking news out of Akron, where there are no survivors in a plane crash. Police tell us the small jet crashed into a home on Magador Road. And the plane was on its way from Dayton when it went down just before 3 o'clock. Dan DeRose is back now with a look at what investigators are looking at right now. Well, they've got it shut down for the night. We know that. They said that earlier. There's just not a lot that they're going to be able to do under the cover of darkness. Uh, they want to be meticulous about the scene. Uh, if, in fact, there are nine total, that's two crew and seven passengers. Uh, if that's the victim count, uh, they need to be respectful. They need to get in there uh, and find uh, what they can, what's left. Uh, we know the flight leaves the Dayton Airport 213 this afternoon. Destination was the Akron Fulton International Airport. Remember, not the Akron Canton Airport. It crashes at 249, meaning it was in the air for 36 minutes, and we know that there were no survivors. The question will become just exactly who was on board and what happened. Those are the two big questions that we hope officials will be able to answer, at least in part for us tomorrow when they hold their first news conference, we're told at noon. We know it was a low cloud ceiling, 600 feet. That's extremely low. That means if you're standing on the ground, it's only 600 feet up to the first level of clouds. The plane was owned by a company called ExecuFlight. They're in the comp they're in the business of uh, uh, leasing out private jets. We know there was a two crew, uh, there was a pilot, a co-pilot, and according to the owner, uh, the executive for ExecuFlight, he says there were seven passengers on that flight. That's what we know now. Of course, a lot, a lot of questions that we hope to get answers for, and we will continue to dig for those. All right, Dan, stay with Cleveland 19 on air and online for continuing coverage of this plane crash. We'll have continuous updates on Cleveland19.com and on social media and more live reports from Akron beginning at 430 tomorrow morning. Well, did you get your new EMV chip credit card yet? A simple microchip is supposed to help stop fraud. But will the change impact your Christmas shopping plans? Tiffany Tucker has a look at what you need to know. Kelsey McLean was on her honeymoon when the bad news came in. She was a victim of credit card fraud. I was horrified. I was absolutely horrified. She spent months cleaning up her credit, so when her mail recently arrived with this replacement credit card containing a little microchip, she was excited to learn more about this new fraud fighting measure. I think it's a good step in the right direction. And a new microchip card has shown up in her mailbox. They're called EMV cards, which stands for Europay, MasterCard, and Visa. EMV is a global standard for chip card technology. All U.S. debit and credit cards will eventually be replaced. This is the most significant upgrade to the payments infrastructure in our country in the 40-year history of the credit card. How do they work? The 8 million merchants in the United States that let you pay with plastic will be installing these new chip card readers. And when you get your new card, instead of swiping that old magnetic strip, you'll dip the chip side of the card into the machine for a few seconds, allowing the chip to communicate with the card reader. The new chip cards generate a unique or dynamic security code with each transaction. What that means is every time you use your card, that chip that's embedded in the card is going to generate a new security code that will not be repeated again when you use that card the next time. Why the change? With magnetic strip cards, the security code is the same for each transaction. That makes it easier for criminals to make counterfeit cards 
which is the top cause of in-store fraud. But the microchip card codes are always changing and proponents say that's tougher to replace. My, my top message for consumers with these credit cards is be excited. Be excited, but experts warn, be mindful. These new cards won't stop someone from stealing your chip card and using it in a store, and it won't stop someone from using stolen credit card numbers to make online purchases. In fact, a nerd wallet study predicts online fraud will likely increase once these chip cards are rolled out. They say that trend happened in the UK when it adopted the technology. The fraudsters want to be able to steal people's money and so they're going to recognize, you know what, now I can't make copies of people's credit cards, I'm going to start doing other things. I'm going to try to steal their credit cards and I'm going to figure out how to hack more online, both of which they can continue to use to exploit the system. Kelsey says using her chip card does take longer to process the transaction, but as a victim of fraud, she's fine with that. It's a bit of a hassle, but a few seconds and well worth it. Well, don't worry if you don't get your new card right away. You can still use your magnetic strip card to pay. The new card readers offer both options. Now, experts say you should always check your credit card statements and transactions to make sure you don't have any unauthorized charges. Denise. Uh, good advice. Now, 1.2 billion credit and debit cards have to be upgraded to those chip cards. MasterCard estimates 63% of all U.S. credit cards will have those embedded chips by the end of the year. And 98% will have the chips by the end of 2017. I've got a warning for you tonight. If you plan on buying a smart TV for the holidays, a new report found Vizio is tracking the viewing habits of television owners and selling it to advertisers. That information contains your IP address, which also is given to advertisers, which means they can also target you through your mobile devices as well. Well, the U.S. Soccer Federation is banning headers for children under 10 and limiting them for kids 11 to 13 after a lawsuit claimed there was negligence in caring for players who suffered concussions. In 2010, 50,000 high school soccer players suffered a concussion. That's more than participants in baseball, basketball, softball and wrestling combined. Cleveland is the place to be if you are looking to buy a house. According to Coldwell Banker, our city is the most affordable place in the country with an average listing price for a four-bedroom, two-bath house selling for about $75,000. The most expensive place to buy a home, Newport Beach, California, at nearly $2.3 million. That's a lot of house. Mm. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Jeff, let's Pretty talk about uh, getting this rain out of here, and can we have a nicer yeah. day? The rain is out. Uh, we, we will have a nicer day tomorrow <laughs> for the begging. veterans. Yeah, we got the Veterans Day Parade Absolutely. in uh, Cleveland tomorrow morning at 930. It will be sunny, and it's going to be a lot better for the morning drive and the uh, kids going off to school tomorrow. Uh, we got uh, 43 at 6 a.m. in the forecast downtown, 42 at 7 a.m., and 42 at 8 a.m., a little bit cooler outside the city limits. But this uh, low cloud deck that's over us right now is just that. We don't have any more rain, uh, nobody reporting even drizzle. And in fact, uh, the sky is starting to clear now around Norwalk and Mansfield. So that clearing is slowly working its way from west to east. Mostly cloudy tonight, clearing late. 38 will be the low in Cleveland. Akron, Canton, mostly cloudy, and you'll drop down to 42. Happy Veterans Day, and thank you, veterans. Uh, sunshine and about 56. It's going to be a seasonable day. Akron, Canton, mostly sunny sky, and 53. So we're looking at about 39 here at 7 a.m. Lunchtime, mostly sunny, 53, and 5 o'clock, uh, 53. We will be warm tomorrow night, and here comes the next system. By Thursday morning, rain and thunder. But that's not going to be the bigger story with this system. A few showers after 7 a.m. So we do have an alert out on Thursday, but not necessarily for the rain, but more so the wind. We're going to have a lot of wind with this, uh, with gusts perhaps up to 50 miles an hour on Thursday. That'll be impacting travel, and we could be talking about some power outages. So after the break in the action tomorrow, this is going to be a wrapped up system with uh, a lot of wind, as I mentioned, 58 on Thursday, and then it starts to cool down. Friday, 51 with lake effect rain developing. And on Saturday, only in the mid 40s. And this lake effect rain could end as a little winter mix 
uh, Friday night and Saturday. So again, we only dropped down to 54 tomorrow night, pretty warm. Very windy Thursday and Friday. Early morning rain and thunder on Thursday. Few showers after that, 58. 51 on Friday. Again, very windy. And by the time we get to Saturday morning, we could be dealing with a winter mix uh, at times. Saturday night, warmer. And Sunday, 59 degrees with sunshine. So look at a lot better the second half of the weekend. Next Monday, partly cloudy and 55. Here's the buzz. Now, it's time for The Buzz, sponsored by National Carpet Mill Outlet. And in your Tuesday Night Buzz tonight, Kate Hudson is coming out with a new book. And LeBron just bought a new home in Los Angeles. According to Variety Magazine, the Cavalier superstar purchased a 9,300 square foot house for $21 million. Reports say this has nothing to do with basketball good. and everything to do with his new deal with Warner Brothers. That's good news. Yes. All right, Kate Hudson will publish an advanced book on health and wellness. It'll be called Pretty Happy. Healthy Ways to Love Your Body, and it's scheduled to be released in February. The actress says it's going to offer inspiration and motivation for women on fitness and nutrition. Well, time for your Chief Gas Report. In Avon Lake, it's 215 at the Speedway, Walker, and State Route 83. 229 in Bainbridge at the Shell, North Quarry, and East Main. And in Medina, 212 at the Sunoco, Northport, and West Union. Mark Schwab is up next with sports. Now, this is the Serpentini Chevrolet Sports Report on Cleveland 19 News. Cavaliers are at home tonight against Utah. Both teams coming in with a head of steam. Cavs had won six in a row. The Jazz had ripped off four of five. This was a fun game to watch. Mo Williams got off to a great start here. Jump shot. They led by 229 point night for Mo. Lynn later in the first. Mo to love to LeBron. It posterized Rudy Gobert. He needed an aspirin after that. Then fourth quarter. Cavs down nine. Love hit a three. That would start a 17 to three run. And then LeBron went nuts. Great driving deuce there. Got the shooter's roll. It was 95 91. Then LeBron with the steal and Rodney on him like a backpack. He still got the hoop and the harm. Down a point. They'd add a lead, and then the King would add on. Driving layup right there. They weren't done after the foul. That kept up a 21-5 run. And then LeBron one more time. Glass and good. 17 in the fourth quarter for LeBron. 31 on the night. Cavaliers win 118-114. After a long weekend off, the Browns got back to practice today in Berea. They'll play in Pittsburgh Sunday at 1. Now, today, Johnny Manziel got the reps as the starter. Josh McCown still down and out. But that does not mean it's going to be that way all week. Coach Mike Pettin still open to starting McCown if they can get him healthy by kickoff. I was waiting for the LeBron money shot when he flexed his arm after the oh. guy had him tied up and he still made he the basket. Had so many incredible shots, I, I he, couldn't get the ball did. in. It was he great. On the fourth quarter. <laughs> Sweet. We'll be right back. It was so. An Indiana family had an unexpected house guest. They called police who captured video of the intruder on an officer's body camera. A deer jumped through a front window of the house, then made his way back to the master bedroom. The buck did some damage to the drywall. Officers later opened a window to let the deer out and back into the wild. Looks like he wanted a nap on a nice comfy wow. bed. Guess he went buck wild. <laughs> From oh Mona, you well, did not. Uh, 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 zero uh, week, all right. Good looking day, huh, Here's Jeff? your forecast on the Cleveland 19 weather app. 42 at 8 a.m. Yeah, sun shines. We'll be in the mid-50s. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us. Cleveland 19 this morning, 4.30 a.m.